Welcome back everyone to more creepy videos. Smash that like button so we can try and hit 2000 likes for this video. Let's dive in. This is pain relief using low frequency and it can also aid in long-term injury and illness this works guys this works that thing is massive but with its frequency and vibrations would you be willing to give this a try yourselves look at the look at the woman right here next to kamala watch your eyes watch it watch it here it comes oh my god Watch your eyes. Watch it. Watch it. Here it comes. Oh my God. It's like rewatching the movie They Sleep, except we don't need to wear Roddy Piper's glasses to see them. Do you remember when David Bowie died in 2016? And this guy who looked exactly like him rocks up on TV to pay tribute to him, no less. This guy is supposedly called Jack Stevens, a music industry professional. But did anyone hear of him before? I can't find many pics of him, and you'd think there'd be lots, right? Bowie had very unique teeth, and this guy seems to have them too. Seems odd that they chose this particular guy, unheard of, to talk about Bowie on TV. There's not many pics after this event either, but here's one. He's promoting a book about, yeah, David Bowie. What do you think about it? Another thing. You'll notice how pixelated the footage is when the camera is on Jack Stevens. Could that be connected? The thing is, why would they want to fake their own deaths? Is it because they feel it's the only way of them getting out of the industry alive? Four actors who were left with lifelong disabilities due to filming. Number one, Ray Bolger. Ray Bolger, who played the scarecrow, was left with permanent scars on his face due to the rubber mask he wore. Additionally, to create the beautiful snow scenes, the production used asbestos, a known carcinogen. Consequently, Bolger developed cancer. Number two, Buddy Epson. During the filming of the 1939 version of The Wizard of Oz, Buddy Epson, who played the Tin Man, had to wear a metal suit and be covered in pure aluminum powder. This caused severe lung damage and lifelong respiratory problems. Number three, Judy Garland. Judy Garland, the star of The Wizard of Oz, was a child actress beloved for her youthful image. However, the studio forced her to take growth-suppressing drugs and imposed strict weight control. The pressures of this life led her to a tragic end at the age of 47. Number four, Margaret Hamilton. Margaret Hamilton, who played the Wicked Witch, suffered from severe health issues due to the large amounts of copper toxins in her makeup. At one point, she could only consume liquid food. Additionally, she was required by the production to handle white phosphorus, which led to third degree burns on her face and arms. For this to happen to four cast members all shooting the same video is just bizarre and weird. Almost like it was calculated in some sadistic way. So theoretically, praying silently inside of your own house is now illegal in Scotland. Not even an exaggeration. There's a new law passed this year in Scotland called the Abortion Services Act, which specifically creates 200 meter safe access zones around 
every abortion clinic in the country and you violate the law if you do anything that would cause harassment, alarm, or distress to staff and patients of these clinics. But specifically included in the list of things that could cause distress is religious preaching and silent prayer vigils. And by the way, applies to both public locations, like outside on the sidewalk, but also private residences such as a house if silent prayer can be seen through your window and you happen to live within two 200 meters of an abortion facility. Extremely similar laws are slated to start being enforced in England and Wales this month. And I can guarantee you the exact same legislation is coming to the United States. Every day I become less and less surprised by how far the elites are willing to go to silence and suppress freedom of expression, but to criminally penalize silent prayer in someone's own home to protect the dignity and innocence of all human life is a new low for Western civilization. They have laws whereby Christians can't pray or be within a 200 meter radius from these facilities. Then have they also got laws regarding 200 meter radius to protect Christians and churches from being attacked on a daily basis? In 1986, Rene Piosh conducted a most astonishing experiment to show telekinesis influencing objects at a distance by the power of the mind. He used newly hatched chicks and a specially made robot. So chickens and birds believe the first animate creature or thing that they see after hatching is their parent, and they become closely bonded. This is called imprinting. And Piotr introduced the newly hatched chicks to the special robot. They loved it and yearned to be close to it. The robot could drive itself around on wheels and had a pen underneath it to trace its path on the paper as it moved. It had a random number generator on the steering, and every few seconds it changed directions. A large table with a low sidewall to prevent the robot from falling off was covered by a sheet of white paper. The robot was placed in the center of the table and set moving. It traced a random pattern across the table. He then put 15 chickens, which were bonded to the robot, in a small cage at one end of the table, put the robot in the center of the table, and switched it on. The chicks felt anxiety when it moved away from them, yearning for it to be close. These chicks had a profound effect on the robot's movement. It moved towards the chickens and stayed at the end of the table closest to them. He put a non-bonded chicken into the cage and the robot traced a random pattern again. Piotr made the room dark and then put a small candle on the robot. Even the non-attached chickens could bring it closer for the comfort of the light. However, when Piosh put rabbits in the cage, they were scared of the device and made it stay at the far end of the table. But when they got used to it, they began to draw it near. It's amazing how even our own energy can pull like a magnet in many ways. And they say good things happen to good people, but good things also happen to people who are positive. And I believe energy of thought is one of those reasons. This is the dark truth behind cell phones and a lot of you aren't going to want to hear it, but you're going to enjoy knowing this information today because it might change your life forever. Cell phones are more than just cell phones. Their patented name is called the Nervous System Manipulation Monitor, which means that these phones are capable of using photons which can alter your subconscious state at any given time if you are unknowing to the device you are seeing the information from. It gets even more deeper than that. Okay, so not only can they manipulate our nervous systems, but they have been doing it from the starting point using the news and color spectrums, the red and blue color spectrums to be exact. And then they were like, okay, let's design cell phones and evolve them to the point where we can start manipulating people at any given time we want. And now look what they're doing. It's even more cryptic than that. You guys see the AI agenda, right? You see how AI is trying to act like humans? And you see how AI is uh, regulating all of social media now? If they are capable of taking pictures of our faces every five seconds with our cell phones and listening to our words, every second we talk, 
Who's to say that they aren't taking data and turning it into fake people so that way after we die, they'll have a bunch of fake bots to act like us for all their scams in the near future. Talk about the ultimate scam of a lifetime. Something to put out there, everyone. Don't overthink it, but just know we might be fueling something that we might not know of. Peace. If they decide to use my data as a bot to scam people when I've passed on, then my corpse better be getting that percentage of that. But here's a fact though, a certain thing happened in our lives recently only existed when you turned your TV, tablet, PC or smartphone on. Let me break down to y'all the reason why I stopped listening to succulent music. But first, let's see what the Bible have to say about music. See now if you turn to Saul 1, you will read a story about how Saul was tormented by an evil spirit. And God told him that the remedy was to find somebody who could string a tune and make him feel better. So basically doing a whole exorcism with music. But what about in 2 Kings when he said, bring a musician to me. Then it happened when the musician played that the Lord came upon him. And I can literally show you scripture after scripture when God said, music brings in the Holy Spirit. Letting you know that things can enter you or spirits can enter your body or your vessel by your ear gates or the things that you're listening to. You never realized by listening to that drill music you felt like killing somebody? You never asked the question why? Maybe you gotta hear it come Make from the own horse's mouth. Purpose. It's not just background music, it's not just, you know, fluffy, light stuff. It's, it's not, this is not elevator satanic, it's no. ritualistic music. It is music it is that by, by even the act of listening to it, you are participating in a satanic ritual. Y'all like and follow for more wisdom and stay tuned. I've stopped listening to secular music a long time ago, but it's said that satanic backmass music is added to video games now too. What is Bill Gates trying to hide? According to the New York Times, Bill Gates has given Kamala Harris over $50 million. Could it have anything to do with keeping the Epstein client list quiet? Elon Musk told the truth to Tucker. He knows all about this Epstein client list. Watch this. You know, I've said I regretted having those dinners. Uh, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing new on that. Is there a lesson for you, for anyone else looking looking at this? Well, he's dead. So, uh, you know, in general, you always have to be careful. Uh, Will that ever come out, do you think? You know, I, I think part of why Kamala's getting so much support is that uh, if, if Trump wins, that Epstein client list is going to become public. Yes. And some of those billionaires behind Kamala are terrified of that outcome. Yeah. Do you think Reed Hoffman's uncomfortable? Yes. Yeah. And Gates. <laughs> and Gates. Yeah. yeah. And I only ask that because you can sort you just look at them and you're like, that that's a nervous person right there. I don't know. I mean, I assume you know them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Reed Hoffman was my vice president of business development at PayPal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 24 years ago. Um, he, does he seem nervous to you? Yeah, I mean, he's terrified of a Trump victory. Because of the disclosure that would follow? I think, yeah, I mean, I think he, he's, he's certainly ideologically not aligned with Trump anyway, but I think he is concerned about the, uh, the, the Epstein situation. Of course. It's one of the big reasons, of course, that Melinda Gates divorced Bill Gates, his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. You know, it was also widely reported that Bill had a, a friendship or business or some kind of contact with Jeffrey Epstein and that you were not, uh, that that was very upsetting to you. Did that play a role in the, in the divorce at all in this process? Yeah, as I said, it's not one thing. It was many things. But I did not like uh, that he'd had meetings with Jeffrey Epstein, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you made that clear to him? I made that clear to him. I also met Jeffrey Epstein exactly one time. Did you? Yes, because I wanted to see who this man was. And um, I regretted it from the second I stepped in the door. He was abhorrent. He was evil personified. I had nightmares about it afterwards. So, you know, my heart breaks for these young women because that's how I felt. And here I'm an older woman. My God, I feel terrible for those young women. It's awful. You felt that the moment you walked in. I didn't he realize was awful. that. Yeah. And you shared that with Bill and he still continued to spend time with him? Any of the questions 
remaining about what Bill's relationship there was, those are for Bill to answer. Okay. But I made it very clear how I felt about him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, fifty million dollars Bill Gates just donated to Kamala Harris because that Epstein client list will remain behind. It will it will remain sealed if Kamala Harris wins the presidency. Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. It's no secret that rich people give money to campaigns and politicians, but with Billy Boy, you simply don't give away fifty million to a politician just so you can go ahead and buy yourself something nice. So we need that Jeffrey and P Diddy list out. This is a picture of a x-ray technician's hand from the early 1900s that dealt with x-rays. Now, back in the 1900s, we didn't know the effects of x-rays and that they actually caused radiation to our hand and to the fingers of the x-ray technicians. The way that the x-ray ionizing radiation affects and damages the body is that it actually hurts the DNA of the cell. So normally all of our cells, including our skin and our guts and all parts of our body are always constantly in turnover. So when that DNA got damaged, it wasn't able to turn the skin cells back over and the accumulation over time of the x-ray radiation would lead to damage like this. You can see the skin damage, you can see the nail damage. Um, these patients would have ulcers that would just never heal because the DNA didn't know how to produce new cells. They unfortunately would also get cancers of the hand and ultimately sometimes need amputations. I find this interesting because back then there was a lack of study regarding radiation and those smartphones don't produce nowhere near as much radiation. There's not enough studies to suggest that these devices are actually safe. This is a message for all of the Hollywood witches. Surrender and throw down your weapons. It has been too long that you have suffered under the deception of Hollywood. So to all of the Hollywood witches, it is time for you to be set free by the power of the Almighty. Blessings. I want to know what Steve knows and that eagle he has on his cap as well. If you look up Isaiah 4031, you'll know its meaning. I a raven rock to me, like what it is, what it's for. No. Raven Rock, like Area 51, remains one of the US government's most classified installations. It's all part of a plan that was hatched 70 years ago. In the 1950s, the government came up with plans for a deep underground command center where the president and, you know, a few hundred staff members not only could take shelter, but also could direct a nuclear war. The plan is called Continuity of Government, or COG. At any moment, we could see thousands of members of the government completely wiped out, but there's a secondary government, a shadow government that is ready to take over at a moment's notice. Raven Rock is an underground backup pentagon. It's the most unbelievable place you can imagine. You're 768 feet below the surface. Don Camel spent three and a half years at Raven Rock as part of the president's communication team. He's never spoken on camera before about his time working in the secret bunker. Basically, they carved out a city underground that could survive a direct hit from a nuclear blast. After you go through the security, you walk in and it's basically an underground tunnel. There's a glass door that was three and a half foot thick that weighed 30 tons. Uh, you go through like an airlock and they had two of those doors and then you walk another uh, half a mile. A half mile deeper into the mountain is the bunker itself. And you're going past five buildings. Those represent the five rings of the Pentagon. And each of those buildings are three stories tall and they probably have 50 to 80 offices per floor. The buildings are mounted on springs to survive the shock waves from a nuclear blast. There's a common cafeteria capable of serving 3,000 people three meals a day for 30 days on lockdown. They had a barber shop in there with one chair. It's got massive reservoirs, generators, even a crematorium if needed, post office, medical facilities, and emergency command and communication links to the U.S. military all around the world. As part of the White House team, Camel had access to the most restricted part of the bunker, the presidential suite. The presidential suite is a very secure area. 
the other people in the site, they had no access and they were very, very curious as far as what was behind the door. The presidential bedroom was, of course, a king-size bed. Then there was a separate kitchen set up in our suite to feed 30 or 40 people. The presidential office overlooked the war room, which uh, had the same display that was a duplicate of what they had in the Pentagon. We would look down, and of course, they'd look up, and they, they couldn't see through the glass because it was a one-way glass. To understand why these bunkers were created, you have to rewind to the 1950s. For some, it was America's golden age. But it was also the dawn of a ruthless fight for global supremacy. The United States and the Soviet Union stand on the verge of direct military confrontation. In which both sides built up an arsenal of spectacularly powerful weapons. That meant the next world war would not last years, but minutes. They have everything to live a normal life underground, and they say that they have food and water down there to keep everyone alive for at least 85 years. Thanks everyone for watching to the end, and fist pump the like button so we can try and hit 2,000 likes. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as YouTube has a way of not recommending this channel. But until the next time everyone, look after yourselves, stay safe, much love, and I'll see you then.